Hi there, my name is Joe Wood, and in this tutorial I'm going to briefly show you how you can create your own digital stories using Google Earth. So if you take a look at my screen here, um, you can see that I actually have a digital story already brought up, and it's this one over here in my places that's about Abraham Lincoln's life. So if I double click on the folder, you notice there's a little folder icon over here to the left in the text area where it says a tour of Abraham Lincoln's life, you'll notice that Google Earth sort of zooms in and where it's taking me is to a location that is sort of equidistant between the five place marks that are inside this particular folder. So the first place mark is this one that says Lincoln's birthplace. And if I double click in the text, just like I did in the folder above, it will zoom in and when it zooms in, it takes me to the location where I created this place mark. And if I click on the blue hyperlink, a box opens up and it's being a little uh, fritzy at the moment. If this happens to you in Google Earth, no problem. Just click the X and then click on the blue hyperlink again. And that usually resolves the problem. But you can see that I have text here. I have hyperlinks and I even have a picture in this particular place mark. Now, if I want to fly to the next location in Lincoln's life, I can double click and in this particular case it's going to take me to Springfield, Illinois. And when I zoom in, what we should see happen, there it goes, is actually a 3D model of Lincoln's house that's built into Google Earth. And so when I click on the Springfield, Illinois place mark, I get text and I get an image just like it, just like in the previous one. So that actually continues throughout all of these different place marks. Now, what I want to do today is I'm going to briefly show you how you can create your own story very similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and close that folder and uncheck it for a second. And I'm actually going to turn off 3D buildings just because it can be a little bandwidth intensive um, in Google Earth. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to create a similar story, um, but this time about Rosa Parks. So what I've done is that over here on the left, I've actually created a Google Doc that has all of my text and even um, some of the different hyperlinks that I want to use in it ready to go. And when you're going to create your own Google Earth stories, I would encourage you to do something similar. Write the story first and then publish it in Google Earth second. So I'm actually, this first bit of text is about creating a folder. Uh, but before we create a folder, it really makes sense to make some place marks. So my first place mark, I've already decided I want to have in Rose's childhood home of Pine Level, Alabama. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Google Earth. I'm going to type in Pine Level, Alabama. There, it shows up, oops. And I'm gonna click search. And what'll happen is Google Earth will automatically take me there. And now that I'm here in Pine Level, um, what I wanna do before I um, add the place mark is I kinda wanna set the view to how I would land if I were gonna fly in here. Imagine um, when you do these Google Earth tours, you're kinda like Superman and you're flying from location to location. So how do you want it to look when you land? And so what I usually just do is use the navigation tools, which are up here in the upper right corner of your screen, and sort of adjust my view so that, you know, I get some idea of what the terrain looks like and uh, maybe the horizon. If there's 3D buildings, you might want to get those into the picture. But in this case, this area is pretty rural. So I'm just going to set it up so you get a general sense of what it looks like. And so I'm ready to add my place mark. So I'm going to add a place mark by clicking on the push pin. So I click on the push pin. And it actually will drop it the last place you kicked, clicked on the screen. But you can move it wherever you want. So let's say I want to have it sort of right smack dab in this intersection here. And you can change the color. So the way I did that, let me go back here, is you notice there's a little yellow push pin in the upper right corner. If you click on that, you can choose a different color push pin. Um, and you can even upload your own icon if you want to go through those steps. That's how I did with Lincoln with a little top hat. But I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the blue and click OK. So now I've got my blue place mark. And now I have to put in a name, but I already have that figured out over here. So I'm going to copy the section that was my title and go back here to Google Earth and paste it in. And then I'm going to go grab my text. Here it is. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in. Now, when you look at this text, it may look like you actually have paragraph breaks here because that was from maybe some text that you copied, but Google Earth reads HTML code. So in order to keep that paragraph break, I have to put in the HTML code for a paragraph break, which is just a lowercase p between the greater than and less than symbols. So I'm gonna click OK and click on this place mark and see how it looks. I got my two paragraphs. I've even got the, par the, the paragraph break. But I wanna add an image. 
And so if I look down here um, in my list of things that I curated, I have a, a, a Rosa Parks house photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link that I have. And this link takes me to a photo that I found on Flickr, uh, which is a photo sharing site. And this particular picture is available for me to use. It's Creative Commons licensed. But what I know in Flickr is that I have to go to Actions and View All Sizes and choose what size I want. So I'm going to go with a small photo. And now that I have the small photo, if I right click on it, I can copy the image URL. For Google Earth to use pictures, the pictures have to be online somewhere else. It will not allow you to upload pictures to it. But I've got that URL, so the way I get it into this place mark is first I have to go back into editing mode. And the way I do that is by right clicking on the place mark and going to Get Info. And now that it's here, what I can do is I want my picture at the top. So I'm going to click Add Image. I'm going to paste in the URL that I copied and click OK. And all Google Earth is doing is it's just basically writing the code for me. But I'm going to have one problem, and if I click OK, I'll show it to you. When I click on the place mark, well, it's doing this little freak out thing. So once again, we just hit the X, do the place mark again. But I have this issue where my picture and my words are kind of stuck next to each other. And I just want to quickly separate those so the paragraph is below the picture. So just like I did before, I'm going to right click, go to Get Info. And this time, I'm going to put it in that little paragraph symbol right after the picture and hit OK. And when I click on the place mark, now it's broken up so it flows a little bit better. The last thing I need to do here though is add some sort of attribution for where I got the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the main page on Flickr because it has a little Creative Commons helper down here where it already has the HTML code for me. So I'm gonna highlight everything, click copy, and then I'm gonna go back here to my place mark, just like before, right click, Get info. Oops, did that a little too fast. Scroll down to the bottom of your text. I'm going to hit return a couple times, do the little paragraph symbol, and then paste in all that code. Now, if I look at this HTML code closely, I notice it has this IMG source equals blah, 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 and it ends in JPEG. That is actually going to put in another copy of the picture, and I don't want that, so I'm just going to highlight it and delete it and click OK. And now when I click on this uh, blue hyperlink, I have my picture, my two paragraphs, and then a link with a citation that'll take me directly to where that picture lives on the internet. So my first place mark is done. So now I wanna do my second place mark. So if I go back to my Google Doc here, um, this one I'm, I decided I'm gonna do in Montgomery, Alabama. And this particular one I don't have a picture for, so it's just gonna be text. So I'm going to come back here just like before, go to search, type in Montgomery, Alabama, hit search. It's going to fly me in. So now I got to use my navigation tools to sort of zoom in and maybe adjust my view a little bit. Now, in the case of Montgomery, I know there's this kind of this cool like curve in the river um, that the downtown is pretty close to. So I'm going to use my tools here to kind of spin around and get myself situated and then I'm going to turn on 3D buildings. I had it turned off just to see if any pop up. Oh, there's a few there. So that's kind of a cool view. I get a sense of what the city looks like, at least modern day. So I'm happy with it. What I'm going to do is just like before, grab a place mark. It drops where I last clicked, so I'm going to just adjust it so it's over the river. Um, this I decided I was going to be called, I was going to call Rosa as an adult. So let me copy it and delete out that text and paste it in. Just like before, grab my two paragraphs, copy and paste. And just like before, I'm going to put in the paragraph break where I want the paragraph to be. And if I click OK, I have my two place marks and I want to click on Rosa's adult and I see I've got my two paragraphs. Perfect. So now that you have two place marks, um, it's probably time to go ahead and make a folder. So you can make a folder by going up to the word add folder. And in my Google Doc here, I had some information for what I wanted to call my folder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it the title, Rosa Parks, Mother of the Modern Day Civil Rights Movement. 
I'm going to paste that in here. The next thing I'm going to do is grab this paragraph, just like before, paste it in here. And then I have some cited sources I want to put in, and these are kind of oops, places where I uh, got information as I was putting my document together. So I'm just going to copy all that and paste it in here, put in a paragraph break, and click OK. Now if I click on my folder, uh, I don't really love the way the text and the URL are sort of all squished together. So I'm going to right click, get info, come back here, Let's see, I'll put in a paragraph break here so there's not a run on there. I'll put in another one here. Put in another one here. So this way they are going to be on separate um, lines. Okay. So if I click OK, it looks a little, a little cleaner. Um, I can kind of see stuff. Now the last part I have is that I have a video and so this video is from um, YouTube but it's uh, originally created by the biography channel and it's a good overview of her life. So what I want to do is put it on my folder. So I'm going to click pause. I don't necessarily need it to play right now but if I go to share and I grab the embed code here it all is and I copy that. I can go back to Google Earth right click on my folder, go to get info, right at the top, I'm going to hit enter, paste it in, and then put in a paragraph break so it's sort of separated. And if I click OK, the video pops up in the middle of my folder and you can actually play it right here. But I'm going to just close my folder uh, icon for the moment. So if you look over here in my area, I have um, Rose's Child at Home, Rosa's adult and then the folder which is this Rosa Parks. I need to drag my place marks into the folder in the right area. So I'm going to drag in the first one and just drop it. See if that worked. Oh, that didn't work. So let me try again. There it goes. There's child at home. Then I'm going to grab adult and do the same thing. Now the one problem I have is I have adult coming before childhood so that's not going to really make sense. So if I drag it up and I get the short line, not the long line, but the short line, then I have the folder, child at home, roses, and adult. Now this is a good time to save um, because as I actually learned about 10 minutes ago when I tried to create this video before, um, periodically Google Earth decides to have a little sudden shutdown. And if so, your, your information would be lost. So the way you save in Google Earth is you don't go up to file and there's no save up there. Instead, what you, go, what you do is you go up to your highest level in this little hierarchy, which would be my folder, and I right click on it, save place as, and I should get a little dialog box that opens up, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop and click save. And so now if I minimize my desktop, I have a little saved copy of my file if something happens. What I'm actually going to do though is I have two more place marks that I want to put into this particular folder and rather than sit here having you watch me do them, um, I'm going to pause this screencast for a few minutes and put in those place marks and then I'll return when it's all done. So hang tight. Hi there, so I'm back and I actually have all four place marks done now. I'm here at my last one which is in Detroit but I want to go ahead and give you the full tour. So I'm going to double click in the text of my folder and zoom all the way out. And just as I mentioned before, Google Earth sort of puts it in an approximate equidistant location to all of the things in your folder. So if I click on the blue hyperlink for my folder, I've got the video, I've got the hyperlinks that I put in earlier along with the text that I added. And then if I double click in the text area for my first place mark, I zoom in. And as I zoom in, I can go ahead and open up the place mark by clicking on the blue hyperlink. There's the picture and the text that I had curated about Rose's childhood experiences. And then I can go to her life as an adult when she moved to Montgomery, Alabama. This is the one that you saw earlier. And if I click on the blue hyperlink, I get the two paragraphs of text that I added just before I paused the video. And then if I uh, double click on the third one, you get to zoom in to the exact location where she refused to give up her seat on the bus. And if I click on the place mark, I have some text, I have an image that I curated, and some additional text along with um, a hyperlink to where the picture was found. 
And then I have my last place mark, um, which is her life sort of after the boycott when she lived in Detroit. So we're flying up to Detroit and we're zooming in. And there's the 3D buildings, um, sort of downtown Detroit. And if I give it a second just to let those load and click on the blue place mark, or the blue hyperlink, sorry, just like before I have the picture and I have the text. So creating your own Google Earth tour, pretty easy to do. You just have to kind of get your text and your images together ahead of time and know a little bit of HTML code. Um, if you want more assistance, I'll actually put a link to um, something I have online at the National Writing Project's Digital Is page. Uh, so this is actually a story I wrote about creating Google Earth Stories and how I learned how to do it. Um, but at the bottom of this story, you'll actually see some related links. And one of them that's really helpful is if you go to Google Lit Trips website and you go to the Lit Trip Tips, that'll actually take you to this page where if you look at the downloadable step-by-step -step guides, there's formatting place markers which is a handy little PDF that kind of breaks down um, what the placemark looks like and then what was the HTML code that had to be put in and why. And really this is a great tool for teaching kids a little bit about HTML without having to go into full on web design, but just teaching them enough uh, to be functional. So once again, uh, my name is Joe Wood. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or shoot me an email.